All right, once our cylinder head is cleaned up and we put our valves in, we would want to install our uh, protector on the head for the spring seat. Then we'd put our valve seals on. If you put the valve seals on first, sometimes the uh, head protector won't fit over top of them and sometimes you can damage them trying to get them off again. So it's important you do that in the right order. Uh, then we can install our springs and retainer. And for this one, we're going to use our valve spring compressor. It's a generic tool that will work on pretty much any cylinder head. We've already adjusted that to the right diameter for the valve spring retainer. And we come in with the other side, we contact our valve and we compress our spring. Now, it's important that we don't compress the spring too far because the retainer is going to hit the top of the valve guide and damage that brand new valve seal that we put in place. Now for our keepers, or collets as we call them, and I'm just going to keep my fingers there as I release this. It, the spring will push my fingers out of the way as the collets or keepers go into place, and that one didn't go. So I need to compress that again. Again, there are special tools to hold these in place, but I never bother with them myself. Maybe I should. And that one's in place, and gravity will hold it there. Now if I can put this one in place without disturbing it, get them in place like that, and I can release that. And I won't pinch my fingers because it pushes my fingers out of the way. And it is in place. Once I get that in place, it's not a bad idea to take a soft-faced hammer and give it a few kawumps. We don't want to make sure we're hitting straight on. If we're hitting at an angle, we can damage that valve. But we want to pop it off its seat and let it hammer shut a few times. That seats our collets into the taper lock, plus it makes our seat and valve face form together. If we had valve rotators on here, we would check to see that the valve rotators are rotating the valve. That's something that should be done on disassembly so you can see if you need to replace the valve rotators. But doing this makes for a better seat for startup and it should work pretty good. All right, another style of head. We're going to install the springs on this one. Uh, we would have this head all cleaned up before that's done, of course. We put our valves in and make sure that they stay up in place. Put a block of wood under. This one here is supported by a block underneath, so it'll work. Uh, we're going to put our spring seat on. So that goes over the valve guide and protects the cast iron. If we had a valve guide, and we don't on this particular engine, we'd put our, or sorry, a valve seal. We'd put our valve seal on at this time. If we'd put it on before we put our spring seat on, it wouldn't fit over and we'd probably damage it, getting it off to set it right. Now this one had a shim under the spring. I'm gonna put that shim back in because that spring would be back to its original height. All right, so we put our retainer on and again, with this one, we're going to use the lever style spring compressor. And these are really nice to use, uh, better than the generic ones, but again, there can be a different one for every engine, and not every shop has all the tooling for every engine. So we screw that in to a reasonable height. We put our... I can do this valve and this valve from one location, so I only have to move the tool once per cylinder. Alright, so if I put that on there, and I have my keepers handy, and I will compress that spring. Actually, I'm going to drop that keeper in right now. And as I compress it, they'll just drop into place for me. That works good when you're working vertical like this. All right, so as I drop that down, and I push down on them as I compress the spring, they pop into place, and I let that up. I could then put the second spring retainer and all that on and use the same tool from that same location to compress that other spring.